What's going on guys, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's How To. Today I'm going to show you guys how to remove and install a new kitchen to transform it from this into this. Doing it all yourself, DIY style, let's get straight into it guys. Let's do this. Alright guys, so we've got a very basic, simple kitchen here that we're going to be ripping out and replacing with basically the exact same layout. Now, the first thing you need to do is measure everything up. Now, the way I'm going to show you everything today is to save as much money as possible and doing everything yourself. So we're going to keep all the plumbing in the same position, the electrical points all in the same position. We've got a freestanding oven here, um, range hood up on top, a couple cabinets up on top as well, micro microwave space, sink and just a couple cabinets underneath and some drawers. So very, very simple and basic. We're also going to be removing all the tiles from the back um, and replacing them with some new tiles. Um, now, whether you call that backsplash or splash back, it doesn't really matter. You get the same concept anyway. And with regards to the kitchen, if you're doing a larger kitchen or a smaller kitchen, it's going to be the exact same process. So what you're going to see today is just a quick rundown of how to remove everything, how to reinstall it. So what we're going to do first is measure up all the area. So standard bench top size, about 600. We've got here from the edge to edge, 2.4 meters. We've got a little um, return here which is about 400 as well. So you need to also measure up your cabinets, make sure you're happy with everything. You've got enough height or clearance from the windowsill down to your kitchen bench top, and that's pretty much it. And once you've got all your measurements, you can have everything drawn up. So this is basically what it's gonna look like. What we're gonna be installing here today, because I usually get my stone a lot cheaper than what most people can get, laminate bench tops, we're gonna also be installing stone, we're gonna be cutting it ourselves, and in order to save as much money as possible, we're gonna be installing a drop-in or a top-mount um, kitchen sink. That way we don't have to take it to a factory, get them to cut it and polish it all off. We're gonna be doing everything ourselves, cutting out our stone for our sink. Um, so this is what it's gonna end up looking like. Polyurethane doors um, and a stone bench top. Very simple concept right here. We've got our measurements, 900 corner cabinet, freestanding stove, we've got a um, 600 cabinet up on top for our range hood, 900 cabinet going on top, got our sink, one more cabinet over here, I think it was a, a meter, uh, there we go, 900, so it's a 900 double cabinet underneath for the sink, and then we've got our 600 drawers. Now, that's pretty much the gist of it right there. Now that we've got that out of the way, we're gonna start removing this kitchen here. Now unfortunately, it's not like you see in TV shows where they just grab a sledgehammer and start breaking everything up. You're gonna cause a lot more damage and create a lot of mess. So what we're gonna have to do is just remove everything bit by bit, take off all these um, doors off the cabinets, and then we'll start removing all our screws. So behind here is all our screw points. A little bit hard to do with my hands, but you'll see there's a screw right behind there. So everything is screwed into the wall. Sometimes you'll find it's also screwed into the other cabinet next to it, the vast majority of times, and you can see there, screw, screw, screw and screw over there, plus on the bottom as well. So I'm going to start removing all of this bit by bit. We're going to remove the bench top, try to keep all the tiles intact. Um, at the moment and I'm going to try take my time with the tiles so that I can remove them with as little damage as possible Preferably if I can get these tiles off the wall without damaging the wall I won't have to resheat the wall and that's also going to save me a lot of money So once again, we're doing everything DIY here doing it yourself from home and I'm going to show you guys how to do it So then you can disconnect your plumbing, cap it all off, and we're going to start removing our sink. You can see there's screws or brackets all the way around that clamp this all down. So basically back that off and we'll be able to remove it. Now with the bench top, we've also got L brackets around here. Plus if you have a look, the trim up on top here, well, I'll try and find one a bit easier to show you guys. You can see there you might find a couple screws that actually hold down the bench as well. So we're going to remove that. 
cut our silicon or our caulking down at the back here um, just to make it a bit easier and we're going to remove the tiles separately. Now with the power points, get an electrician, especially depending on which country you live in here in Sydney, Australia, um, you need to get an electrician to disconnect all of those for you. Um, so we've got a couple points top for our microwave, our range hood um, and a couple as well up against the splashback, so, or backsplash, sorry. Um, so anyway, screw, unscrew all of those. Alright guys, so now we've got pretty much most of the kitchen now removed, all we've basically got left is these tiles. Now, I want to try and remove these tiles in as few pieces as possible, and what I mean by that is removing a large section at a time to try and prevent any damage on the existing wall, so that we don't have to replace all the walls behind it. Now we can see here, that's the original villa board that's at the back, but if we have a close look underneath, you can see they've used another backing board and then laid the tiles on top of that. What that means for me is if I can separate um, the original villa board from this uh, backing that they've used, I might be able to remove a whole section at a time. So you can see here we've got a little joint. Well, there's not really a joint, but there's a gap in between between two boards. I'm gonna simply chisel down here, break up these tiles, and then try and remove this whole left section in one piece. Same thing on the right, just to try and avoid any damage. But I mean, this is all in theory. Once I start um, trying to remove this, we'll find out just how easy it comes off. But that's basically all we've got left at this point. Remove all of these tiles here from my splashback. Or backsplash, fine. Um, so we're gonna just remove all of these and clean everything up, get it ready for our new kitchen. So I'm going to have to replace a little section down here, but the vast majority of it did come off, unfortunately. So close. Alright guys, so we're running out of a bit of time here, so we're going to speed through this a little bit more than usual. Um, but if you want to see an in-depth video, we'll leave that for another time. First things first, our baseboards here, or our kickboards, everything here needs to be 100% uh, level and flush with one another. If this is all level, everything else will line up nicely. So we're just gonna get our other piece as well because this is an L shape. And our other piece will simply drop over here. i just gotta get over this piping. So we've now got everything lined up. What we're going to do next is we're going to secure these two kickboards to one another. This is going to support all our cabinetry once it's in place. So just a couple quick screws through the side. So now we've got our two pieces nicely lined up. What we're going to do is move this around a bit until it's 100% square and we're happy with our final position. Um, we're also going to apply some packers underneath the cabinetry, make sure it's all level. So I'm going to quickly take a level, make sure everything's nicely um, in place here. So simply put a couple packers depending on what you need in order to get the right level. Once you've got the right level, then we can put our cabinets on top of this.
Alrighty, so now we've got our cabinets installed. We put a couple screws into the studs as well, just for a little bit of added support. But once we've got our um, bench top in here, our tiled splashback sealed all in, this thing is not going anywhere. All right, so now to conceal all these screw holes here from the original cabinetry, we've got an end panel here. Once again, a polyurethane finish. Slide that one in. I'm gonna make sure everything's nice and flush. Once we're happy with it, we can screw from the inside to secure this one here onto our cabinet. And once everything's complete, this is the finished product. So we've got a nice new modern kitchen, stone bench tops with polyurethane doors. Hopefully this one here is gonna last the maximum amount of time as possible. Um, I know usually I like to do a step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial or video on how to do everything step-by-step, um, -step, but unfortunately I'm just really swamped, or actually it's pretty fortunate for me. I'm absolutely swamped with work, um, so I couldn't take my time and record everything into detail with regards to this video, um, but hopefully you've gained the basic concepts and principles that's involved when it comes to removing your old kitchen and replacing it with a new one. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty basic, Everything is exactly the same regardless of the layout. The only difference is we save the most amount of money by keeping our plumbing in the same position and our electricals in the same position. We cut our stone ourselves, which is very easy to do once again. Just use a wet diamond saw blade and it'll cut through like butter nice and easy. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and if you wanna see a more in-depth review or a step-by-step -step process on how to do it, let me know, I'll try and pick up a job as cheap as possible just so that I can really take my time and show you guys how to do it. Um, but hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos regardless and you're learning something new. As always guys, like, comment and subscribe. Until next time I'm Bill, thanks for watching Bill's How To.